a very happy new year 2021 we pray it turns out a year of joy hope happiness and lots of love for everyone we are here today to praise and thank our loving jesus for all the countless blessings he has bestowed upon each one of us and our families we are so grateful to him for his love and compassion for keeping us keeping a close watch over us and keeping us close to his heart always he covers us with this big banner of love which protects us from every kind of difficulty we face today our choir here is going to sing the first hymn which is his banner over us is love
The Story of Ruth Elimech and his wife Naomi had two sons, Mahalon and Kilion, and lived in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. When the area was hit with a famine, they decided to leave to find food. They travelled to nearby land of Moab and settled there to live. The Moabite people did not worship God but their own idols. Sometime later, Ameliak died. The two sons grew up and married local Moabite women, Ruth and Ophah. Sadly, tragedy struck again. Ten years later, after the two sons had settled in Moab, Mahalon and Kilion both died. It left three widows, Naomi and her two young Moabite daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Ophah. When Naomi heard that the Lord had provided food for the people back in Bethlehem, she decided to return. The three widows packed up their belongings. Naomi then told her two daughter-in-laws, Go back to your own mother, mother's homes. May the Lord show you the same kindness you have showed to your dead husbands and to me. May God help you find new husbands. Naomi kissed them both goodbye and they wept aloud. We will go back with you to your people, they replied. No, you must return home, Naomi insisted. You can marry again. Naomi felt embittered and that God was against her. Ophah and Ruth wept again. Ophah kissed Naomi goodbye and returned home to her mother's house. Ruth, however, clung hold of Naomi and would not let her go. Ophah has returned to her people and their gods, said Naomi. Go back with her. Don't urge me to leave you, Ruth replied. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to stay with her, they both set off on the road to Bethlehem. They arrived back in Bethlehem just as the barley harvest was beginning. Their arrival caused quite a stir. Naomi's grief and suffering had changed her appearance so much that many did not recognize her. Can this be Naomi? People asked. Don't call me Naomi, she insisted. Call me Mara, which means bitter, because God has made my life bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has brought misfortune on me. Hi children, I'm very pleased to speak to you today on a very important topic, the heroes of our time, 
Um, I just want to know how many of you are familiar with uh, uh, Iron Man or Spider Man or the other heroes we see on the TV. In the time of um, the biblical time, many years ago, we used to have people like that who are superheroes. And one of those important characters is Moses. God called Moses and gave him a special job to look after his people, to be their leader, to take them out to the promise, out for, uh, from Egypt to the promised land. And God gave him just a stick. And with that stick, Moses was able to part the Red Sea into two. He used that stick to accomplish so many things. He brought water out of the rock as well. Another important hero after Moses was Joshua. God gave Joshua so much power to take over from Moses the position of leadership. And Joshua was able to lead the people from where Moses stopped to the promised land. And one great thing that Joshua did, he led them to conquer the, the, the city of Jericho. There are many other heroes like that. Of course, I'm sure you are very familiar with the story of Sansin, Sansin who fought the Philistines and brought them to, his, to their knees. We have other heroes called Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. He had an encounter with the prophets of Baal, about 450 of them, and he overcame. So we have so many heroes. One more hero I want to draw your attention to is called David. How many of you are familiar with David? You still remember the story of David and Goliath? Yes, I think some of you still remember. David was only 12 years old when God started using him. God gave David so much power with just an ordinary stone, he was able to bring down Goliath, who was a huge man, a giant, a great warrior, very experienced warrior. And how did all these people make this possible? Because they put their trust in God. Another very important hero I want to mention or talk to you about is Daniel. How many of you have, are familiar with the story of Daniel? Daniel was a very young man when he was taken away from Israel to uh, Babylon. But Daniel lost his father's land. He lost everything, but there was one thing he didn't lose, his faith. So the story of Daniel is actually a very beautiful story because it's a story of faith in God. It's a story of courage in, faces of, in the face of persecution. It's a story that tells us that jealousy is not good. When people are blessed, we shouldn't be jealous of them. It's a story that when we suffer, we should, pers we should have courage not to give up that God will always listen to our prayer. It's a story that all those who are on the side of God will always have victory, even if the world goes against them. So I think as children, we really would like to be like Daniel. But the most important hero of all time is Call Who. Would you like to guess? Jesus. All these great men I have mentioned, if you put all of them together, the Spider-Man, the Iron Man, Elijah, Solomon, uh, uh, Joshua, Moses, and all of them, if you put them together, they are not as great as Jesus. Jesus is the greatest and the superhero. And that is why I want you to come to Jesus today as I'm going to bring Jesus from the tabernacle over there I'll place him here so that as children, we can sit quietly or kneel quietly and talk to Jesus, who is the greatest of all heroes. The reason is because when we talk to Jesus, he will make us to have faith in God. He will give us courage. He will give us a, a strength when we suffer persecution. And he will make us to, have, uh, a, to, to, to be victorious, especially when things get wrong. So I want to invite us now to come together as I bring Jesus out, the greatest hero of our time and the greatest hero of all time to help us develop that strength, that grace we need to become great heroes, great men and women of our time so that we can bring other people closer to God. So with me now, can I ask you to please kneel as I go over there to the tabernacle and bring Jesus out to the Blessed Sacrament, and then we can pray together.
Children, I would like to introduce you to another great hero. This time, this particular one is the greatest hero of our time. He's no other person than Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. When I spoke about all the heroes in the scriptures, the few ones I mentioned to you, if you look at what they did, somehow they used either a stick or a stone or it's just a matter of prayer and their faith to do great things. But Jesus, who is our superhero or the, one, the, the most powerful hero of all time, is God himself. He is the one who made these people heroes. And guess what? Jesus can also make you a hero. How? If you follow his teachings of obedience to parents, to teachers, to your loved ones, you are coming close to becoming a hero. Being a hero in this way does not only mean doing great things, but you could be doing very little things with great heart, like saying, thank you, please, excuse me. All those things are little things, but when you do them with a great heart, you are making yourself like Jesus. Jesus, even though he is God, but as a little child, he learned to obey his parents. He lived under their authority. He did exactly what he was told straight away, not at his own time, but at the time they wanted him to do it. Whenever his mom, Mary, or his earthly father, Joseph, asked him for anything, he doesn't delay. He goes for it and do it straight away. And as children, we all are expected to behave like that. Because there are times we are playing our computer games or doing other things, and mom or dad wants us to do something, and we say, oh, I'll do it later. Or, or sometimes we grumble. When you do that, you are not making yourself a hero. Jesus can help you to become a superhero. We need someone to save our world today. Can you see what is happening? Does this send any, any message to you? That there is need for good leadership. Even in the society out there, among the politicians, we need good leaders. And with Jesus, his power, if we trust him, if we believe him, he can make you a leader. And by so doing, you can bring so many people to, the, to, to God. Just imagine what it takes now. If you have a prime minister or a president who is God-fearing, who has so much love for Jesus in his heart, he can bring the whole nation back to God. That's what we need. As individual preachers, I can't bring the whole world to, to God. I can't bring the, the other person can't bring the whole world to God. We all can do the little we can, but we just need someone to be on top. And if you allow Jesus to lead you in a way of humility and you become a leader, it becomes a lot easier for you to bring conversion to so many people. At the moment, we don't have such leaders. And that is why it becomes very important to, as a child, build your strong relationship with Jesus. And how do you build that relationship? Do exactly what Daniel did by trying to be prayerful, don't be afraid of anyone, and to have strong faith in God that whatever you ask, God will do it for you. I know some of you here have a lot of needs, different kinds of needs, and there are things you would like to be when you grow. But you cannot become any of those things without Him. And that is why I'm inviting you now to join me as we approach Jesus who made each of these people a hero of their time so that that same Jesus can make us a hero of our time. 
Today we are talking about Joshua, about Moses, about Elijah, about Daniel, about Ruth, about so many of them. It was Jesus who made them what they are or what they were many years ago. Hundred years from now, the world needs to talk about you. And to talk about you, you have to allow Jesus to use you so that you, when you become a hero of our time, then people, children who are yet to be born, can talk about you as maybe Daniel or Joshua or Moses or whatever your name may be. And then God's name will be glorified. So it is possible and we can do it. We have all it takes to do it. What it takes to do it is to build that strong, reliable relationship with Jesus in prayer. So may I invite you now to please kneel as we pray together, talking to Jesus, our Savior, our God, who is willing and ready to help us to become what God has made us to be. May God bless you.